Poker.net World Open 3. Tonight, six more players take to the table to compete for a seat in the semi-final. There's a $500,000 prize pool with $200,000 going to the winner. So let's have a look how the tournament's shaping up so far. Last time, players included John McGill, John Shaw and Raj Mona. He knows he's got two live cards. He doesn't care what he's up against. He knows he needs to double up. And he has. He's gone all in. I shouldn't really call this, but I think I'm going to call it. Cool. Hey, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Nice hand. Nice. I knew it was going to be good. Right. It's a pretty big raise, actually. I think we're down to 36 thousand. Oh, let's gamble. Oh, look, I'll just gamble. Oh, God. But well, you said it, let's gamble. Kings on the river in the bush. Yeah. No surprise there's that no luck all night. Sassoon getting busy into the chip leader. Well, Sassoon comes out betting, and that's his only real chance of winning the pot here. Okay. Okay. Boy, it's over. Sassoon needs help. Zombies took control. And that is it. All in there. I call. <laughs> He's called everything else, and Moon is doing it again. But this not bad for Convy. It, it's actually his best shot to get back in it. And uh, Convy is just on the bitter end. Like short Raised to 40,000. Wow, Moda slips up here. He's going to find them playing a big pot. He is re raising. It's all going to go in. Shaw was just ironclad, wasn't he? Yeah. With 580,000, Shaw does have the lead here, but there's not that much in it. This is um, effectively tournament over for the loser, real. Oh, and that's the difference. Up. He has hit the flops when he's needed to, and now Shaw just needs running diamonds or an ace. Moda has done it. Let's see the runners and riders in Heat 3 as they prepare to bet and bluff for a spot in the semi-final. Robin Keston um, from London. I've been playing poker for 20 years. Chances of winning are at least 1 in 6. So uh, we just have to see what happens with the, with the cards and the, the way the, the, just the heat, heat shapes up. Anything can happen. My name is David Johnson. I'm 19. I'm from Telford, Shropshire. Well, in this game, it's only six-handed, so I suppose anyone can win it here, so we've got a good chance, same as everyone else. I think I'm pretty consistent and uh, pretty conservative, so hopefully that'll show in my game today. My name's Kevin Twig. Um, I'm from Watford. I've been playing poker for about ten years. If I get the cards and it falls right, I'll, I'll expect to do well. I'm Robert Cooper from London, playing poker for four years. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a tough heat. There's good players, I know a few of them. Um, only the chap who's the online qualifier I don't know, but I know the rest of them. And they're all good players. My name's James Aikenhead, I'm from London, and I've been playing two years. I feel my chances today are pretty high, you know. I like my chances. Short-handed play is my forte, so. I think I'm a better player than everyone else at the table because they're all rocks and I'm not a rock. Uh, my name is Don Fagan. I'm from Ireland. I've been playing poker more than 35 years. I expect the game to be tough. All these heats are tough. There's no easy heat. Each player has equal chances. It's just how the cards fall on the day. Six players walking in and now for this heat of the PartyPoker.net World Open 3. This is the third of the main draw heats. Bit of a mixed bag here tonight. A couple of old rounders, some new players, and some first timers. I'm joined by Barry Martin. And uh, Barry, which of these six do you know well? Well, I know James Aikenhead pretty well, Jesse. Um, been around the circuit now for a couple of years and got some great results under his belt. Robin Keston from uh, late night poker fame has done pretty well very big cash player yeah I mean Keston might have to be the favorite here uh, based on experience and uh, you know form certainly absolutely but we've got a couple of uh, new faces that shouldn't be underestimated going into this one uh, Jesse 
couple of young hot shots. David Johnson there, one of the players everybody is talking about around the Midlands area. He's qualified for this event. And, uh, of course, Kevin Twig on his left, the uh, gut shot qualifier. Um, first time on TV, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed, and this boy's got some game. So I think this is very much, as you said, w a wide open heat. Players yeah. beginning it's with 100,000 in tournament chips. Yellow's worth 1,000, blues are two, and the oh, reds are 5,000. There's 600,000 chips in play. You must get them all or go home. Blinds are gonna start at one and 2,000, as they always do. The big blind will be Rob Cooper's, who's had a lot of experience here. First action to James Aikenhead. I've never seen Aikenhead play before, but he's uh, one of those guys that you see his names all over the European leaderboards. Okay. He's got a lot of moves, Jesse. Yeah, um, he's, he's one of these Michael Jackson players, you know. Plenty of moves, very young, plays a lot online. And as I said, it's many good results in and around the uh, UK and European okay, tour. You know, it's uh, so many good young players in the UK. It's just a chance of them breaking through with that big result, I guess. I think this is going to suit his game as well. This six-handed, pretty quick, uh, pretty quick structure. I'm sure it's going to suit his game. And uh, I'll be looking for James to make some some uh, some early moves. I must say, cards being spun out now, and. Uh, who do you think is going to set the pace here? I mean, uh, who, who's the aggressor? Well, it's interesting because this, the first Pass. couple of levels, you really look to, for someone to set the pace. Who's going to play Pass. ABC? Who's going to start making moves early? Who's going to really Pass. use their position aggressively? And I think within Pass. maybe <coughs> five to six hands, we'll start to see exactly what these guys have uh, come to the table with. Yeah, first hand, everybody's <laughs> rocked up, walked around to Cooper. <coughs> the Greek fish was saying last week that you know, uh, if you set out to fold the first 21 Pass. hands, which is the first level, there's no way it's going to cost you more than 9,000. And uh, obviously you can develop Race a very tight image that way. Keston doesn't feel that way. Cool. These two, Keston and Cooper, are looking like the ones who uh, either want chips or want to go home. Rob's going to peel off a flop here. He's got him dominated as well, hasn't he, with the uh, with the ace five. It's kind of one of those halfway <coughs> hands, isn't it? You're either very good or very bad. <laughs> this would be good. Check. Is Robin going to make the continuation bet from the raise? And I'm sure. Is it a check raise? Oh. No. No, a bet of eight, it looks like, called by Cooper. Why the decision not to raise? Just uh, keep the pot small, perhaps? I suppose if he does raise and, and Keston has got a big hand, does he want to face the re-re-raise? That's the problem that uh, I'm sure Rob, by flat calling, has done. And we, you have to say, Jesse, Check. he's out of position. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Keston... He's, he's nearly drawing dead, but I Check. almost fancy him to win this pot. Well, if it, comes, if it doesn't come an ace or a spade on the river, uh, and he gets checked to him. I'm sure Robin is <coughs> going to bet the river. He's doing a very good job of looking like a man with ten jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great scare card. Now, if Rob can pick up. Check. Now, the only way Keston's going to win this is by betting. Oh, he's going to bet. You think he's going to have to bet this? He's gonna, he's gonna, look at he's twisted his face 27, like a 27 27 in the pot was he gonna bet 15 11,000 he loves this stuff Pass. <laughs> he's not to, he's not to know how easy that was is he <laughs> <laughs> and, and a mistake you must say that Rob's made there by not check raising on the flop there Jesse he missed the opportunity to take it down right there with a very powerful hand on the flop I mean, that's what this game is all about, isn't it? The, the pots that no one's got anything, you must win those. Absolutely. This is, you know, No Limit Hold'em's not about the cards you get, it's about the, the bets you make and the positions, etc. And um, Rob definitely <coughs> missed one here. Kasten uh, often calls himself the unluckiest man in poker. He has had some bad luck on the TV table, but uh, Pass. Anyway, you have to decide for yourself. Pass. I like the way he plays. Pass. Pass. It's okay. Cool. Little limp in. 
What do you think of the blind on blinds in these early doors? I mean, uh, it's really it. I guess most of the pots Price you're going to be playing are going to be the, against the guy oh. on your left and your right. I don't like the call here from Coopies. James has raised him up. He's out of position. He needs to outflop him. And he's done so. <laughs> yeah. That was a mini raise. 6, Is that a strong lead or a weak lead or just informational maybe? L looks like a feel a bit, doesn't it, Jesse? He's just put a thing saying, you know, I got Jack. Is it any good? Can James work it out? It's a raggy old board, isn't it? Uh, are you going to be betting if you've got a king in this spot? Pass. James says yes. Yeah, or, or perhaps just t too early to, to get too involved, maybe? I, I don't know. Um, David Johnson in the Pass. big blind, and uh, as you say, these first level, it's all about Pass. getting a feel. Ooh. Anything Price surprise you so far? Title. Not really. They're just, I'm, I'm sure they're all feeling each other out, trying to figure That's out exactly little. what everyone's up to. But the blind's so small, one, two. It, it, Pass. You can just gauge the water, really. Pass. This could be a relationship beginning here. Cooper and Aikenhead. Aikenhead, he didn't say much. He just kind of said over to Baba, quite active, aren't you? It's vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that water was the question. I yes, he said it was vodka. I can't, <laughs> I can't see it somehow. <laughs> Sounds like the old move um, Paul Newman put on in uh, cool in the, hand in the no the sting. Do you remember he, he oh he, he yeah had vodka or gin all over him just to make it sound like uh, smell like he was drunk. Very underrated Pass. movie for its poker content. It's Absolutely. brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant poker scene. I love when he's doing all the uh, card tricks and he drops the cards <laughs> at the end. Raised to six thousand total. James with the magic stealing button Pass. decides to raise it up with the uh, rag ace. Yeah, oh. this uh, this Aiken had uh, he's managed to find himself in the middle of a couple of pots already. He hasn't exactly gotten great cards, but it hasn't stopped him. Hold on. And how is Twig gonna play this now? He's flopped okay. the bottom pair. He's out of position. Okay. For nice comes, it's gonna be interesting after he's made his uh, his side card. Check. 7,000. I mean, just representational here, Jesse, isn't Both. it? Yeah, just good call from Kevin. He obviously <laughs> takes a it. a nice call. Takes it that he doesn't put him on a king. <laughs> it's be a long call now. Check, check, and first. Race high. Keep it a honest there, Kevin Twig. Absolutely. Bit interesting to see if uh, James could have fired the second, the second bullet on the river. Um, but the call obviously scared him away. The nightmare for our players tonight is to be blinded out whilst waiting for a good hand. Will their patience pay off or will they be out? Let's find out after the break. This is the PartyPoker.net World Open 3. Some of our players are just having a bit of fun while others are taking it a lot more seriously. This could be their only chance for a piece of that $500,000 prize pool. Let's go back over to our commentators. Not I'm surprised, but Don Fagan's been remarkably quiet for a guy that I've seen play on TV um, uh, TV poker before. It, it, the guy's all action usually. Oh yeah, I mean in, in, in Vegas in the 80s, his nickname was Kaluki Don. <laughs> and that was because, you know, Kaluki, he, apparently he played so many hands that they thought he played like he had Pass. 11 cards. <laughs> and, um, Pass. You know, he was, um, he was Mr. Action. And uh, you're right, he's been very quiet. Raised 6,000 total. James A. Kinnead raising up with a big slick. Part of the hit squad. Oh. Now, race. Whoa, Twig with the re-raise here. Now, what's this? What they call the squeeze oh, play? This is more. trying to squeeze now, and he's not going. James is not going to be going anywhere with and his ace king. I mean, what's the thought behind this? Well, 
I'm sure he puts James on a, on a simple button steal. Uh, he doesn't read him for race king, that's for sure. And um, I'm sure James is now thinking, right, he puts me on a, on a button steal. How do I extract the most out of it? It's going to be a re-raise. I'm sure he's going to make it more expensive. A raise. Re-raise. And uh, the rationale for, for re-raising there, not just calling, of course, complicated because Johnson's in the middle, right? He can't just peel off the flop here. He can't. Uh, with Ace King, you don't want to be seeing a flop. You don't, you don't want a, a pair of sevens to be catching or... Another 27. Pass. Great oh. news for Dave Johnson. And has Twig just been found out? Well, they can't see his cards, so they... This would be a little unwise, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> I can't see James folding if he wants to make the move. This is a fold. This is a fold all day long, Jesse. It's Twig perhaps taking the requisite amount of time to make people think that he had something. Absolutely. It's fair enough. Yeah, he's, he's making out he's got ace-jack or ace-queen. Or pocket nines or something like this that's, uh, that's going to be difficult to call. We can see he's got 10-8 and... Um, and never call in a month of Sundays. I tell you, the, the, the fun part starts after the hand when Twig has to try and <laughs> tell the others <laughs> what, what he folded. <laughs> I, I think he's going to go for pocket jacks. That's what I think he's going to go for. I'm surprised he doesn't give a bit of speech play to James saying, is my ace queen good or is my jacks good? Pass. Now, I wonder if James is... No, he's not going to show. <laughs> Aiken had made the sweat a little bit, but the ace king held. You always feel like you're a bit half out the window there when you got half your chips in with ace king. Well, he, was he was never going to pass Jesse with no. ace king, was he? No. he? He kind of read the situation well, and um, he had the goods okay. to back it up if, if, if now That's Kevin wants to. <laughs> i tell you, there was a curious call from David Johnson in the middle of that pot in the small blind that kind of got everything going. And, uh, oh. Oh, here comes Fay. Oh. the first. He's limped. Pass. Yeah. Very tricky. Pass. Cool. You're Fair right. Fagan has been like a mouse with his chips so far tonight. Just creeping in with the ace queen. I'd, I'd say any of the other five players at this table would have raised in that spot. Obviously, uh, Fagan's coming in with a, a very clear game plan, Jesse. First level's the shutdown. Yep. Play very. Uh, very tight. Check. The, the problem you've got is Rob Check. Cooper's now flopped Check. top pair. 6,000. Um, being unraised pot, he must feel that he's in front. Well, Pass. how confident is Fagan going to be Pass. right now? I mean, isn't the problem with Ace Queen, uh, well. you know, you let too many people in, you flop an Ace, and then somebody's got two pairs? Absolutely. Fagan's just calling here. I mean, is he trapping or is he trying to keep the pot small? Check. Cooper could easily be limping here with a six or a seven. <coughs> and that's what Fagan's thinking about. I don't think eight thousand is enough to uh, make him my case queen, that's for sure. Does Rob put him on a flush draw? I think he's just going to oh. pay him off. This is a man, Don Fagan, who has uh, been playing for 20 years, but he took some time off, came back a few years ago, and last year he made deep in the money finish at the World Series of Poker. Top 100, in fact. And uh, he's quite comfortable playing flops, check, turns, check. and rivers. Ace. Ace, yeah. But you would say <coughs> that he missed a couple bets there, or would you say that's just his style? King of Spades, <laughs> quite a party. Difficult to say what, what mentality is coming here today, Jesse. Uh, I, I was watching the uh, he, I was watching uh, Mr. Fagan play at the uh, in Aruba, and he was all action on this <laughs> on that TV table. Six-handed, he was firing bullets left, right, and center. So still a full complement of six here, and as you can see by the pie pieces, Barry, uh, nobody's done too much to knock themselves out of it. No, but if I'm Rob Cooper, I'm going to start having a rethink about my uh, about my game plan. It's not work currently, and that and that ten seven play was um, curious. Uh, yeah, that's the being nice to him. Curious is the oh. word you can use. He's <laughs> good guy. Okay. I, I think. I, Rob is here to hit some hands, that's for sure. 
raised to 8,000 total. Aikenhead has picked up on this, hasn't he? That Cooper yes. is limp and weak. Yes. I mean, that's the only reason you can raise here with a Jack Nine, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. He, he sees there's some free money in the pot, Jesse. He wants to pick it up Pass. right here. I, I guarantee he doesn't want to see a flop with Jack Nine. Pass. Funny thing is, the race is only 6,000. I think he's going to, yeah, he's going to get a customer. Oh. He's out of position again, Jesse. You know, he's going to be first to speak against a very aggressive player in James Aikenhead. This is not the position I want to be playing. Um, you know, you don't mind playing against Fagan in this spot or even Robin. God, any flop that hits one is going to hit them both. As it is, it's hit them none. Check. Check bet fold, I guarantee. I'm sure James is going to follow through here. Yep, standard continuation play. Make out he's looking for the uh, see what see what colour his ace is. <laughs> Sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, Pass. Yeah, like you say, Cooper pretty much put in a position there where he either had to hit the flop or he was out the door. And uh, that's whew, looking like an easy spot for Aiken had to pick up money. Absolutely, you've got position. You're the razor. Um, Cooper's got to slow down here, Jesse. You know, he's, he's he's not far off being, you know, done half his stack. He's hemorrhaging now, and he needs, he needs to slow down. Every five-card poker hand falls into the official ranking of poker hands. At the bottom is high card only. Then one pair alone. Two pair is higher still. Three of a kind, self-explanatory. A straight is five cards in a row of any suit. Ace can play high or low there. A flush, five cards of the same suit in any order. A full house is three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind is all of a number. A straight flush is five in a row, all the same suit, and a royal flush in the highest hand you can make. That is a straight flush, ace high. Twig from Watford. He's been a regular on the scene in and around London, he played a lot of Luton, plays at the Vic, uh, the Western, etc. He's, um, he's been around Pass. the block, this boy, that's for sure. Pass. Good roster of tournaments in the London area Pass. these days. Pass. Actually, the live scene has picked up dramatically in the last couple of years. And uh, there's several examples of it at this table, a lot of London oh, players. Absolutely, a plethora of really good uh, players coming out of the Capitals now, Jesse. And uh, James, Race, as I said, one, one of the hit squad. And, Four or five of those guys are just tremendous tournament players. Cool. And uh, these guys are both feeling a little hard-headed to me, Barry uh, Aikenhead. Coming in on uh, Johnson's big blind and Johnson squirrely. Not giving it up. 9,000. Once again, standard continuation bet from Aikenhead being the Pass. razor, taking the aggression. <laughs> Feels like there's only room for one of those two at this table. But uh, yeah, Aikenhead, uh, he's got his foot on the gas, doesn't he? I'm sure he's going to open up going into second and third level. Lines up to two and four thousand now. And uh, I mean, Rob Cooper, 55,000. You know, to be fair to him, you'd have to say it's his own fault. Well, has he got a bus to catch here? <laughs> <laughs> Rob for Rob uh, Cooper, taxi for Cooper. <laughs> well, actually, it's chauffeured Bentley for Cooper, but... Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Either way, the motor must be running, but uh, yeah, the, the funny thing is, I mean, 55,000, very playable stack right now. Hold the phones here, Jesse. Fagan's raised it up. Jack ten. Yeah. Obviously fruit. level two. He's um he's decided now James is thinking, hold on, he flat called with ace queen. <laughs> yeah. See first hand of the level. Absolutely. Stop raising it. Too much. See, <laughs> see, see what he did in the first level there, Jesse. He's, he's actually laid it down whereby he's flat called with ace queen, got to show it to everybody. And now we can raise up with filth and uh, and take down so the blinds. Not only an Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> It is pretty crafty, isn't it? Very crafty. I know that. But as I said, his chips was in before mine. When I re-raised the check, and, uh, Fagan, in the, me. the, the I, amazing I, thing is that he's got 114,000. He's in second position. And uh, his table image is probably the best at the table. Holy Toledo. Hold up. He's got, he's got the ladies. All right. Oh, All go according See, to script. Well, the problem is he's probably not going to get paid for this, Jesse, is he? They, they put him down as a complete rock. 
And Twig's thinking, well, he raised the last pot. It is King Jack suited. It's a good fold. But it's Fagan. Right. <laughs> Robin, Robin thinking with a five high. Sus. Gives yeah, it the side like. Just been <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if you can't get anybody to call, it's always good to advertise. As advertised, he says. Thank you very much, boys. And the queens are good. He's fantastic, Don. He, play, he plays the part of the doddering old fool to a T. <laughs> but I tell you what, he knows exactly what's going on. Well, I mean, they never care for him, Jesse. You know, he, if he lets them, if he carries on like this, he may rob them blind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quite capable. Tight fold there from David Johnson. What is that about? Just a sort of a table image thing. Uh, just timing, perhaps? Or just a feeling? Well, co I considering thought. he's, uh, you know, young hotshot, you, they say the younger you are, the more moves you make, and the older you get, the less you bluff. Um, <coughs> that was very, very tight, wasn't it, King 10? Listen, if you're 19 years old and have won six figures uh, playing poker, d d you've, d you've, d you've definitely won money on the King 10. I guarantee it's like, a good absolutely. end for you. <laughs> Interesting here, he's raised up with the fives. And, um, Keston's called for for, for five no, thousand no, no. more. Keston, I mean, uh, Fagan's called. Yeah, with with the with the uh, with the Doyle Brunson. Check. Both make it straight with the eight. Yeah, Robin's not going to want to see an eight. Why has Keston slipped this? Is he is he thinking about a check raise here? Well, is he? he has to think about you know Fagan's played very solid uh, as far as he's aware. He's played the ace queen slowly. Check. He's raised with queens as he's shown. I wouldn't be surprised, I guess. I think Keston might be planning to play these like Fagan played the ace-queen. Just check them down and hope the other guy bluffs. Well, unfortunately, now now with the three over cards and a paired nine, um, much worse a shape. Fourteen. That was odd. That was a strange pot, wasn't it? <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> I mean, on, on one hand, it feels like Keston just gave away that putt. On the other hand, it, it seems quite clear that Fagan has these guys bedoogled. Well, the first level, he just didn't want to get involved. Now he wants to be in every pot. He's got 129,000, and as far as these guys are concerned, he is the Rock of Gibraltar. But uh, it hasn't happened that way. And uh, poor Robin Keston, he's had a few playable hands. He doesn't yes. seem to be making them work, and he's down to 86,000. Cool. He throws away King-10 in the cutoff and wants a limp now with Jack-10 suited. Interesting. Pass. It's, Pass. it's funny, Pass. I mean, I, I've always been of the mind, Barry, that cool. this particular yeah. format, this one-table six-seater on TV, uh, it does nice. take a lot of practice to get it right. And this... <laughs> Now Rob Cooper, after watching him in the first level, now wants to just check it in the uh, in the big blind with the ace queen. I wish I knew. <laughs> check, check. Very tricky play. <laughs> Third place, David Johnson yeah. will have a bet. Absolutely no way. Does not want to see backdoor spades. Now Fagan with second pair thinking to himself. He's limped. Has he got an ace? Is he flushing? Is it a positional bet? I don't think Rob Cooper's going anywhere. Cool. Yeah, I mean, this is just getting odder by the minute. And the question is, will Johnson pull the trigger again? Oh, dear. That's Check. a huge card. for Probably wow. the best card in the deck for David Johnson. Well, if it takes off now on the turn... Oh, I'm all in. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Cooper's got the better flush draw, doesn't he? Absolutely. Oh, Johnson's in bigger trouble than you'd think. He can only win with a seven or a queen. Yep, that's not a spade. Wow. And he lays it down, up and down with a flush draw, Jesse, and he lays it down. That's, that's absolute rock pass, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be. More action after this.
welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open 3. Some of our players are clawing their way into the semi-final by using all of their nine lives. Let's get back to the table. Chip distribution, three bigger wedges, the uh, Fagan Aiken head contestant. The Cooper's kind of recovered a little bit, hasn't he? Yeah, that pot, the pot against uh, against Johnson was uh, must have given him a little bit more confidence there, Jesse. He needed it. He was uh, he was hemorrhaging chips. Halfway through the second level, is there is there anybody who right now you feel has got to sort of change their game plan? Well, Cooper looks like he's settled down. He's coming to the second level. Obviously, wanting to see a lot of flops in the first level and uh, and shipped over half, well nearly half his chips around, but he's got a few back. I think Fagan's the one that's uh, definitely changed his game in this second level. Twig limping in here. And uh, Keston wants to make him play, pay the, the tax. No. Cool. Okay. Suspicious. Hmm. Maybe he doesn't like the limp. Cool. Anyways. It's funny, when a guy who's been raising a lot no limps, rights? the first thing that goes to people's mind is just... Trap. Yeah. <laughs> Tra trapper. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fur hat on Kevin, that's for sure. Check. Check. So we've got a couple Check. of tens out there with um, free cards all around. Cooper and Twig. Yeah. Let's put Fagin in the lead. Check. Check. Yeah. Check. Check. Can't see much happening here. Well, the kings are going to be the scare. The scare facts for everyone here, uh, Jesse. <coughs> well, I think the Check. only guy who's better is the guy who's got nothing. Check. Yeah, quickly. Check. <laughs> the funny thing is, they've all got a reasonable <laughs> chance to win this in a check <laughs> showdown. So well, <laughs> you have to you have to say Kester made a mistake there with the eights. He's actually ended up last, uh, and he had the best hand pre-flop. And uh, making it eight, ten thousand or something pre-flop would have won it, and uh, it, it could have avoided all of this shenanigans. It's a very good point. Very good point. As it was, Fagan wins another one he's not entitled to. In fact, Fagan was probably the one guy who definitely wasn't entitled to win that pot. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> it was absolutely, it was last, wasn't he, on the yeah, flop? He was. Absolutely stone cold last. Boss. You can only do what they'll let you, and they're letting Fagan do a lot Boss. right now. Oh, hello. Cowboy alert. This is, uh, I think if you ask Robin, he'll mention that thing. this is one of his favorite hands and also the hand he hates the most. Became very famous. I'm all in. Oh, uh -oh. boy. Um, he may be become very famous. <laughs> I think he's going <laughs> to like this, though. Yeah, uh, he, he was very famous, actually, for laying down kings before the flop at one of the first televised poker events. But uh, It was a poker million, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the very first poker million. And, and he went out, what, ninth or <laughs> eighth or something? It wasn't, wasn't cool. good. Cool. But uh, this time he's in great shape, and this is going to be oh. hard news for Rob yeah, Cooper. Nice Aiken had made a nice fold there, but... Uh, awesome. Cooper said, I'll put you on Ace King, which is interesting. Well done. This has been a quick ride for Cooper. He kind of dribbled down, got back into it, and now needs to hit a seven to uh, either have the chip lead or be first out. He's got a heart. So he's got running hearts as well, yeah. running straight draw. And a seven. Yeah, no. Aiken had pa passed the pocket sixes. He'd be in fine shape. He though. would have been. <laughs> yeah. He was never going to see the sixes, was he? Raise, re, raise, all in. Oh. Well, okay, he yeah. still got outs. It, it, it's actually given Cooper more outs. That Absolutely, game, hasn't it? A miracle. Any heart, that's not the four. Yeah, eight outs he's got here. <laughs> so will Robin Keston's Kings. Well done, Robin. Well done. Lucky me. Good luck. Well done. Sixth position for Rob Cooper. Looking at that hand again. The king on the turn, uh, ironically, didn't help Keston's hand that much. But uh, three kings holding up the two sevens when the flush draw is And missed. if Cooper doesn't re-raise there, um, Jesse, Aikenhead sees a flop, and Keston and Cooper put Well, Keston will definitely go broke. Al although, you'd probably say Aikenhead would have gone broke with the king on the turn, because yeah. he's never well, going to lay it down. Right, well, that, exactly. So we could have seen an absolute monster plot if Cooper doesn't move in. <laughs> So, on one hand, he's, he's done Aikenhead a, a, a disservice, and on the other, a right favour. Well, near the end of the second level, uh, 
What's the mission right now? Uh, Aiken had Johnson and Twig. They both all look like they're busy counting their chips. Is it wait till the next level and then get busy? Is it wait for a hand? Is it get busy? Well, I think James Aiken is probably in the best position because he's got Johnson. 14,000. Robin Kesson's not on his big blind um, when, he, when he's got the button. Twigs made it 14 and... Uh, Cool. A lot of guys would have re-raised there, and yeah. some might have even folded. Absolutely. Plus. Do you think Fagan has sensed that uh, Twig is kind of committed with the rest of his staff? Interesting to see what uh, what Kevin does on the flop here. Well, that's a great flop for yeah, two seven. It's the perfect for seven. See, he has to bet. Is he going to put 15 in there, Jesse? He's got about 55 in front of him. And there's 34 in the pot. 14. Called it. So he's about under half the pot. I don't think he's going to be going anywhere if he gets set in, Jesse. With the sevens. Even if he's a, he's a dog to an over pair, he's got lots of outs. I mean, by calling before the flop, wasn't Fagan effectively saying, I believe you have the best hand now, and now that he hasn't hit, I mean, I mean... Or was he just trying to, you know, Ace-Queen's not a trapping hand. What's he got left on it? It's not a trapping hand, Ace-Queen, is it? This is one of those questions that's asked more to see how the guy handles his chips. 41, I yeah. think. Absolutely. Don's been around the block enough times just to try and do one more, yeah. Don Don't knows exactly how many chips yeah, he has Oh, my! And then he's made the wrong decision. Well Twig's not going to fold these. I can't see him folding the sevens now. No. Now, we're showing the ace-king, Jesse, the mistake that's now led to Don try trying to bluff uh, Kevin Twig off of this one. I mean, what, what, what's going through Twig's head? What kind of hands is he thinking Fagan might have? Well, an over pair to the eight, maybe? Nines cool. or tens? Cool. Called. Good, Good call. Cards over, please. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the fucking says you got me. Twig yeah. says, not yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, this is great news okay. for the young gutshot qualifier, Kevin Twig. Fagan, obviously, I'll have some chips left, but uh, if the ace or queen doesn't come, it's not going to be many at all. And big pot here. Six would end it. That's good enough. No lady, no bullet, says Twiggy. A uh, big hand for the big fella. Okay. Yes, it's going to put him right back in this game here, Jesse. And um, don't like the way Don played that hand. Flat calling with the ace queen. He could have ended it. He could have made him lay down the sevens pre-flop. Decided to want to see a flop. Now sets him in with no hand. Maybe he should stick to Kaluki. Okay. <laughs> I know, uh, I mean, everything's been going well for Don, but uh, now down to 59,000. He's going to have to play screwy, screwed down poker with that remaining stack. And, uh, Do you think his glasses might be too dark? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was unlike him. I mean, uh, you know, from what I've seen of Don Fag and the way he played that hand pre-flop, he was willing to lay it down post-flop. Well, <laughs> that's the way he was playing it. Like, if I don't need an ace or a queen, I'm going to lay it down to you. The, the only answer, Barry, I just wonder if he, he saw something and he sort well, of misread it. Yeah, maybe maybe he put Kevin on just making a continuation play with, with no hand and uh, and he could push him off it. But it's dangerous with a guy with no chips. Right, 10, 14 title. Pass. No, Fagan is. Pass. I've seen it. Pass. Hello, Rod. And here's Keston getting busy. Twig in that lovely position of worrying about how to stack his chips. Someone's going to have to find a hand against uh, <laughs> Robin, aren't they? If they're going to play with as many chips as he's got, they're going to have to find a hand against him. It is a nice stack to be wielding right now. Yep. Average chips, of course, 120. and Keston with over 100,000 more than that. But I, I, I think the big danger right now is Kevin Twig. I mean, it looked like for a while he was trying to knock himself out of this heat. But, you know, if he can learn his lessons, and I, I think he will, he, he's in great shape. 
One bullet. One There's bullet, one. says Don Fagan. Wow. Call it if you don't like money. That's, that's a lot to be putting in for, uh, for just picking up 6,000 in the blinds. 60,000 worth. If he gets called, he's in trouble, isn't he? Yeah. Well, five-handed ace-nine. 59,000 in total. Against the four. Oh. <laughs> wow. Good luck to you, sir. Plus. 59 to win six. Do you know that? Mm. <laughs> 59 to win six. Wow. It is not lost on anyone. You're going to get the six. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Give, give the gentleman the money. I prefer to double up. Yeah. Is yeah. that a tilt move, Jesse, so. do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard to say anything else, really, isn't it? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Look at it, the pie chart. How quickly things change. Fagan going from second uh, in a role reversal with Kevin Twig and giving him some life. Aikenhead and Johnson just treading water of late. John has been very quiet for uh, for this, you know, Phil Ivey look-alike. Supposed to have been, uh, you know, new kid on the block. Is he waiting Us. for the next level? Or is he, uh, you know, Us. is he waiting no. for a big hand? It's, it's, it's a good Us. question. I mean, uh, you know, he he's, he's obviously decided he's going to take this very seriously. and uh, Or just deer in the headlights. Yeah, get his will. Either he's trying close. to get his money in a good spot, eight. or you're right, he may have frozen up. I wonder. We'll see. This... Looks suspiciously like a race. Eight. I mean, is there any reason for Fagan to peel off the flop? He can't peel a flop off his sevens. If he's going to play this pot, Jesse, he has to move in here if he fancies, if he fancies his sevens at all. I raise. I'm all in. Raise all in. The only problem he's got here, Jesse, he's done it against Robin Keston, who's heavily chipped. Cool. Yes. Nice Cards over then, please. Yep. It's a race. Straight race, and uh, I would imagine that after what Fagan's been through of late, uh, the 50 50 shot to basically get right back in it is he's not averse to it. No, and how quickly you said things can change. I mean, uh, Kesson obviously was hoping to be in a dominating spot here, he's not, and uh, five cards will tell. Will Keston be massive chip leader or back in the pack? Wow, I think that is our answer. <laughs> Needs running diamonds, though. Jesse's got out diamonds, please. <laughs> Or exactly. running H Jack or something like this. I've been down there before. I'm sick. I call him up. I'm sick. Kaluki Don says, "Don't do it." It's in the deck. So. Can't change. <laughs> My destiny is there. Oh, oh wow! Still have a hell to climb. Other ways out: a four, a jack, <laughs> or an ace. Yep. Plenty of outs actually here for Kesson to make a bigger full house than Don Fagan. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Okay. Made it interesting on the river there, Jesse. <laughs> Fagan said he wanted to double up and uh, his prayers have been answered. I've been playing poker a long time. Uh, I started before the internet was ever heard of internet poker, but um, the games were, they were good those days too. But you didn't get the same action that you get today where most people in those days uh, played a very solid game. The person introduced me to uh, No Limit Hold'em and uh, with this level uh, it was Terry Rogers. He introduced poker to um, American Hold'em to Ireland and uh, we all started playing and we had a club and it took off from there. Before I had a family and everything, I always had a poker and I made a good living in, in the early days so it was never a problem. I was more encouraged than that. The old days I used to play a different style to everybody else, I, I used money management. I set a target for myself when I went to travel to play poker. Um, once I reached that target, it was a lock up and then I, I continued to play with whatever I had above that, but I never broke back into my target, so, and that worked for me. I had an average of 28 wins out of 30. I retired for about 10 years out of poker, I left poker. I just play select tournaments now, I'm well in the World Series this year, just uh, 06, so I'm looking forward to going out there this year. There's no one can intimidate me. We all can have off days and different things like that when we're not firing, but uh, I don't know, we, we, always, we always, I always played a strong game and most of the lads I played with tough lads, I held my own all the time. Any time, tournament I play, I've always, it's my family on mind, I'm quite comfortable, I'm happy with what I've got, but I, when I play a tournament, it's, I play it to win for the family, not for myself, but I'm, I'm happy where I am today. It's funny how sometimes the medium stacks are the ones that can really push it. They, they've got 
Well, they're scary because it doesn't look like uh, they're going to back off a hand. And uh, they have the most to gain. So that's what Aikenhead's doing right now. He's certainly been the most active since this level started. Absolutely. <coughs> Under the gun for Johnson. He's going to lose 9,000 in the next two hands. In the blinds. <coughs> Stronger than nines. Nines Raised in the cut off. Total. Also <laughs> rough dress, isn't it? In this five handed game. Pass. Twelve on the big blind. Hmm. Looks pretty Jesse, but um I'm sure James is not gonna uh is is the fold recommended? I think so. Right. Oh my! The fold's recommended, but the raise is also in his in James's arsenal. And is this because he believes the twig's raising requirements are are, are fairly thin, well, he's fairly broad? Even he's played with, with Kevin Twig a lot, and he knows he could be raised with any range of hands. Thirty-three thousand more. Oh. All in. Quick all in from Twig, and how is Aikenhead going to feel about this now? He's <laughs> Well, he's, he's stuck in 50,000 with what he's done. And, uh, geez, he's only got 80,000 back. I think he's going to count his chips out and fold here, Jesse. He just cannot be going to war with Jack-10 suited. And look, Kevin Twig's got the hand that, that Aikenhead wants to see him with, which is a, an under pair, but, um, wow. You have to have a lot of gamble to call on this spot. It, if the hands were turned over... It's an can, yeah. auto call. Auto call if your hands are turned over, but there are so many hands that James could be dominated by. An over pair, a big ace, ace, jack, ace, queen, something like this. He can't call. That was me, right? Here you go. Oh, only by a few thousand, well, but he does. Tournament life on the line here. I don't think James is going to go out with jack 10 of, of spades. Are we racing? I don't know yet. You want to raise? Do what you like. I'm not passing. <laughs> 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 well, I think the smile from Twiggy. He, at this stage, he's pretty confident that uh, a race is, uh, is his worst case scenario. He doesn't think uh, Akinet has a, a pair higher than nines anymore, does he? No. Absolutely not. He It's good to get your chips in first in these kind of spots, I guess. Which is what Twig has done. It's all up to Aikenhead here. I mean, is he seriously considering calling? I think he's I just trying it. to work out how much is in the pot, Pass. how many chips he's got left, and I think he can try and figure out a better spot than that. Uh, Some of our players have never been under pressure like this. The lights and cameras can really affect their game, and their poor tells and bad moves are exposed to us all. More action after the break. This is the PartyFoker.net World Open 3. Can you be too confident? And can aggressive play cost you more than you realise? Just ask Rob Cooper, who made a change to his tactics tonight, and now he's out. Let's see who'll be joining him in the green room as we head back to the table. He's got a lot of game, James Aikenhead, and, uh, and when he's got queens, it's always handy. Always. Raise. Sure is. 16,000 total, pass. Game looks easy when you get the ladies. Hmm. These guys have obviously played with each other before. Nice. They, they're suspicious of every nice. move the other makes. Uh oh. Now he's raised. What's his third time in a row that James has raised? Does he smell it? A huge, it's a huge trap he for raised. Fagan. All he's he's going to double up. Yeah, well, uh, Fagan looks like he's going to double out. He's got him slightly covered, Jesse, so... Well, it's all going in here. Yeah, yeah there's... Four queens. Four. Pair of queens. Laying in a call. Oh, That's the story. Pair versus the yeah, over pair, and uh, Don Fagan... He survived a straight race. Now he's going to have to survive a 
one where Aikenhead's got a huge head start. It is Aikenhead all in, but uh, you know, Aiken's only going to have about 20,000 left. Yep. Should the six avoid the board? Well, if James does double up here, he's, he's put him right back in this game, Jesse. Yeah, he really has. There's the queen, oh, wow. but it's diamonds. Oh, oh, hello. Is that a good flop or a bad flop <laughs> if you're in head? Well, it's, it's giving him loads more outs. That's the problem, yeah. Jesse. Mixed blessings, really. Pair on the board would be uh, Aikenhead's savior here. The diamond is what Fagin needs to and double. Recovery. There's nine of them. Not bad. No. Just play the board. Save card for the ladies. Yep. Anything but a diamond that doesn't pair the board. Eight outs on the river for Fagan. And that's oh. a miss. Good hand. Thank you. And uh, that was a bit of a sweat there for James, but uh, I would imagine he's going to put these to good use. Right now, Aikenhead and Twig are going to lead 1 2, and uh, Fagan down to Desperado stuff. Was there another way for Fagan to play that hand? We won't know, but uh, look at Aikenhead and Twig. Could have folded. Yeah, it like it was okay. a bit there. Between them, Johnson and Fagan yeah. have, uh, geez, less than 10 big blinds Johnson. combined. <laughs> Not good shape. No, never, never, never. Twenty-two thousand. Yeah. If Don Fagan stood up, up in a, on David Johnson's you shoulders, just then when you just start playing, you it'd still be only three that's foot tall. No, what I'm saying is, you just think that not oh, three foot tall. That's the one I ever played. Does he get the chips and smash them? And uh, <laughs> is, is this lively. sort of a, a time strategy-wise, Barry? When if you're a big stack it's like right, Aikenhead and Twig, yeah. you actually play a little tight until the short stacks so either double up or knock themselves out. James Aiken has <laughs> taken a, a stand against David Johnson. He's going he's gonna to play nice. against his David Johnson's big blind very aggressively. Raise. Raise. Fourteen thousand more, twenty total. And, uh, anything Pass. reasonable. That is. <laughs> That's that, is that reasonable enough, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the part of the requirements, I imagine. I'm all in. Oh. All in. All <laughs> done. No, no. Okay, we've got a fair here. Oops. That's okay. Your bet will go. What well, look. Am I allowed to raise now? Marty, no, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no. I just okay. having a bit of fun there. But it, the, the well, actually, rules, yeah. well, it's actually, his bet wouldn't have gone if James now wants to re reopen the betting by raising. Nice, no, uh, so yeah. Kevin could have passed. Wow, what a result. Yeah, and Kevin said he had a result, and he did, because uh, if, if Fagan doesn't du double up James Aikenhead with the sixes, um, Twig could have found himself in a really bad spot. Yeah, that yeah. these things go. Uh, 50,000 will look like a lot of chips to Fagan, who uh, technically looked like he was out of this heat about a moment ago. Anything but the jack now, and uh, he'll have... Oh, the Arshi blows. Doesn't seem to be going Don's way. No need to 10, and a 10 very, very quickly, or a queen's going to do it for him. No, only the queen, Jesse. Yeah, yep, yep, right you are. I'm fine, don't worry. Yeah. Actually, an ace. An ace would work as well. An ace would work, yep. You're right. Okay, good luck, lads. Okay. For the Anorex. Okay, well played. Don okay. Fagan. Uh, at one point tonight, uh, early on, Barry, it looked like Fagan was the mastermind here, but he just kind of slipped away. And played itself in the end there, Jesse. Queens against the Jackson just got unlucky. Yeah, and the full house taking out the two pair. Fagan leaves us four-handed. What went wrong today for me was, uh, I knew I wasn't myself at the table today. I knew I, earlier on I played one hand particularly bad, and, I, and the singles were there, but uh, it was just one of my off days. Well, I'd still picked up and came back into the game, and, but um, you're disappointed when you're knocked out, but it's not the end of it. I always take it as it comes, and, Look forward to the next tournament.
Ну, что было из этого? Пас. Пас. See, I just don't understand oh. that. You, you feel that was auto race. Like well, 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 he's on the button. Mm. He, he's he's now got a head of steam. Mm. He's shown everyone he's an absolute rock by Sorry. passing pretty much 90% of the time. And he wants to fold Queen 10 on the button. Yeah, and as we can see by the cards out there and the woulda, coulda, <coughs> shoulda, it woulda got through. <coughs> if he coulda done it, and perhaps Check. he shoulda. Check. Nice little flop for Twig. Who, he may be playing okay. a check raise here. Check. I yeah, wonder. Up and down with an eight high flush draw. So it's, uh, it's, it's a decent, it's a decent turn. Check. He wants to check it though. Castle can have some uh, attachments here. He's got the pair of sixes. He's got the f jack for the flush. Both these guys either very good or very bad. That's that's about the strength of their hands. Oh, don't step over that line, Kevin. Well, I think he might, if he does, if he does muster up a raise here, Jesse, I think it's going to get through. <coughs> cool. Doesn't want to see a spade. Is he hoping for the spade? I Can't wonder. be with the eight, can he? I wonder. Check. Check. Robin's got a value bet this, isn't he? That, that, that's what I'm wondering. The queen's a good card for him because there's only the ace and the king out there that um, he's got to really be afraid of. I'm sure he's going to call this. 15,000. I mean, this is a bit scary. I mean, and what should happen if Twig should raise? Is Keston committed? It's a bit itchy. Oh, I don't like this. Cold. Twig is going to feel like he just gave away 25,000. Yep. Yep. <coughs> and that's compressed the top three once again. Okay. No fun. No fun, says Kevin Twig. Look at these, very tight at the top, aren't they? Not more than 20,000 between them. <laughs> Keston, well, <laughs> seemed to play that pretty well. Oh, well, I've been around poker for 15 or 20 years. I was in Las Vegas and uh, I had a two week ticket or something like that and I was there on holiday with a bunch of friends and after two days I was just so bored of casino games and the slot machines and the roulette and blackjack and these sort of things and I just walked past the card room and the guy said one seat here and I sat down in a hundred dollar limit hold'em game I think to the two dollar four dollar limit or something like that and uh, that was it I was hooked for forever. I'm playing pretty much maybe 40 hours a week online Omaha um, but not traveling very much I mean I might go to Vegas once a year um, I probably play the World Series and that's it and I don't play very much live. I'm in the bingo business and basically I'm sort of, it gives me the time to, I'm setting up new clubs and stuff like that so I'm sort of lucky to have the time to be able to play almost as much as I want now um, and, and develop the new businesses as well so it's sort of the best of both worlds. I wouldn't like to be <laughs> surviving on poker and without any business to back up. My kids love it, I mean they just like, you know, they've, they've watched some of these tournaments and they, they understand what's going on and they're sort of like, oh god, you know, they're telling me how to play that and it's great and it's good. I'm just in it for fun, really, and if I, if I win something that will be, uh, that's fine, and if I don't, that's also fine. So. so, it's always sort of a decision you seem to be faced with in these, uh, right. would you rather be heads up 300,000 a piece right, 20, or take a gamble to get a... 500,000 or so to the chip lead. Well, I think this one's going to play itself out pretty straightforward. James is going to re-raise. All in. Raise all in. It's a big re-raise. What's that place? And uh, Aiken had uh, pretty much saying, I <laughs> you're not going to catch me getting my chips in second here. Absolutely. And this just for show right now for Twiggy. It Absolutely. No, yeah. no intention of calling. No. Standard count. Let me have a look. Maybe trying to get a bit of, bit of feeling how strong James is for this, uh, for this push in. 
he's not, he's not, you know, a lot of guys will try and count those chips close to the line and get a read. He's scared one of them might <laughs> slip <laughs> over. He's got them all the way at the back there. No accidents will happen. Absolutely. Resting on the pad, <laughs> just in case. It is a bet, of course, if the chips go over that blue line. And, uh, it's funny, I mean, uh, I feel like Aiken had, uh, after holding that Queen Jack, his re-raising requirements of Twig are quite conservative here, but Twig obviously doing this dwell up because he doesn't, he thinks Aikenhead might be at it wants to put him in the twister. Absolutely. And he, he didn't really take a good look at James there just to get a feel of what he was doing it with and um, maybe didn't need to with Ace-5, Jesse. Welcome back. Four playing here at the PartyPoker.net World Open 3. We're only a few hands away from the next level. I wonder would you characterize this five and ten thousand level as uneventful? Not not too much has happened, is it? It's been, we've been a, seen a few raises, not too many flops. First raise in a while from Robin. I would imagine Robin's gonna have trouble laying these down to a re-raise. Fucking thirty thousand. Oh. Oh wow. Well, Aikenhead doesn't think so. A Aikenhead thinks he can take Robin off this. He he's already announced re-raise, hasn't he? It's a strong move, isn't it? Considering that Keston's put a third of his chips in, or well, well over a quarter of his chips in. Make it 80 total. Raise to 80 total. And Twig's still in this, uh, Jesse. If Twig wakes up with the hand, we what? could see fireworks on this one. Yes. Now can Robin pass? I mean, he must have picked up a sign of weakness. I, I, I guess Keston could put these down. It's just a Very marginal, is it, with Ace-9? It's a strong move by Aikenhead. Robin, bingo, Keston going into the tank here, Jesse, and um, it's a marginal one. I mean, if, Aiken, if this works out for Aikenhead, it's brilliant. If it doesn't work out, he's going to look like a fool. Well, you know what? He's not in terrible shape with his 7-8, is he? You know, they're two live cards. Robin's just trying to work out if he does pass, what's he going to be left with? I wonder if Aikenhead knows Keston's reputation. This is the man who laid down the Kings pre-flop. Marginal. Oops. Very marginal. Oh, wow. And oh, nice jack up <laughs> you know, if, if Aikenhead goes forward and wins this heat, I mean, that'll be one of the key factors. He's picked up those chips yeah. out of thin air. That's 45,000 worth. With no hand. With absolutely no hand. Purely on, on heart and heart alone did James win those chips. He, he caught <clears throat> the re-raise out so quickly. It, it, it's, it's, he just seen something. I don't know what he'd seen. I think he figured on that Robin's not been involved in too many pots and he's just trying to force the action. And uh, that's really set Robin back a, a peg or two. Look at 86,000 now he's on. And, um, Raise all in. It was a pretty stunning move oh. from Aikenhead. Now here we've got uh, David Johnson on the move. King 10 enough for him. And uh, this call from Twig not looking good from the Johnson corner. Nope. This this is the problem, I think, uh, when you're, you're looking for cards, I guess, Barry, is that... Uh, the problem is sometimes a guy wakes up with a hand. Unfortunately. And uh, Johnson all in. There is 144,000 in the pot. That's the good news. The bad news is without a king, Johnson's a dead duck. Yep. There's a not the best spot Johnson's found himself in, but uh, I suppose a king on the bottom was good enough. Running spades a faint possibility. That's all. David Johnson, 19. Ooh! And all of a sudden, now Twig's got the one-outer. Come on, Johnson. You can let a smile cross your lips. This is a bit unlucky for David, for Kevin Twig. Wow. So DJ David Johnson is, after all the waiting, is now second in chips. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, wait. More than one way to skin a cat, I guess. And, uh, but, get, but getting it in with King 10 against 10, Jesse, is, uh, is a very messy way to skin this cat. <laughs> He's been listening to Mad Marty's stories, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 144,000 now, and uh, this, uh, well, Twig has seen a lot of adversity in this heat before. Let's see how he can pick himself up off the floor. Still got 100,000. Did nothing wrong. Just got unlucky, Jesse. You oh, know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If Kevin Johnson starts Back picking up five. hands, I guess Plus. he can start to become a huge force here. Another 22. First, first in a long while, Jesse, that he's actually mm. not raised all in and uh, taken the pot down. Yeah, look, look at his body language has changed. Johnson sitting up straight and the uh, the stats belie it. David Johnson, he's been the tightest player at the table, but now up into second position. I've um, played a few tournaments, 1,000 pound volumes and etc. Um, I've been fairly successful in them. Play a lot of cash games and very successful in them, so I've been doing well recently. About 18 months ago, I saw my uncle playing on the internet. Um, I, as soon as I seen him play, I started and I put some money across and I won. And I, start, I was hooked since then. Actually, I was playing uh, Mad Marty Wilson in a tournament um, where I actually beat him when he was large stack and I was short stack. And um, I beat him and he, he said it'd be good to get on the circuit and he got me involved. It'd be nice if I could win in front of him and prove him right because he's told me I'm, I'm good enough to play to go on and get through to the next round so hopefully I can prove him right and do one for the Bridge North boys I suppose. At the moment it's definitely more of a hobby, I've got a, a, a career that I, I do well in so it's just a hobby at the moment. I've actually got um, a couple of shops in Birmingham where we sell exotic animals, parrots, snakes, lizards. Um, we import them from all over the country and all over the world so I started up and that, that's the job, I, I own the business. It's nice to, um, to work for yourself and if you put in what, you only get out what you put in, so if, if, if I do well and, and I work hard then I do well at it, so yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. This will be my first time on television. I'm just going to play my game and play how I play and we'll see what happens. Line 70, 15,000 hey, um, now. And testing under the gun, he's counting his chips here, Barry. Uh, 73,000. Uh, what would you say his all in requirements are here? Any face card, Jesse, any ace, pocket pair. That, that'll be good enough, I think, for, uh, for Robin to be pushing in because if he lets the blinds go past him, he's losing 22,000 in there, which is about a third of his stack. So anything with some paint, he's going to be pushing. <laughs> <laughs> Not much there. <laughs> Robert wasn't. <laughs> I guarantee he wasn't surprised to see those. 40,000. Raised to 40,000 total. Uh, this is, a, it's a real, sh uh, I would say, a strategy statement here from James Aikenhead. Us. With the Jack 5. I mean, he knows that. Cool. Wow. wow, what is Kevin Twig up to? Stop and go play here, I think, Jesse. Whatever comes on the flop, Kevin's moving in. I fear you're right. He has to push. Yeah, stop and, standard wow. stop and go play for uh, for Kevin Tweak. That, that was lovely. Hmm? Pass. That was really yeah. lovely stuff, Barry. Yeah. I mean, it, it, obviously, he, he'll look like a complete donkey if he gets caught out there. <laughs> but when it works, it's lovely. Well, he knows James' range of hands. He doesn't have to have anything there raising on the button as chip leader. So Kevin made the, the situation that... He didn't want to be put into a test because if he moves in on pre-flop, he's going to get called. And the stop-and-go play was 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 the only play in his arsenal he could really adopt that was going to win him some chips. And I mean, uh, I mean I, I, I've always read that the stop-and-go is, you know, if the flop doesn't come an ace, you push in. But uh, Kevin just reckoned that James was bound to miss. Absolutely. He, he took the chance that what, he was going to miss one of his uh, his two cards. Didn't have to have an ace. I, it, it could have come anything there, and Kevin was going to uh, was going to push. And, and look at the benefits for Kevin Twig. He was down to 115. He's up to 170,000. Hasn't had to turn the cards over. No. Uh, you know, it's it's a really good play against an aggressive player. There's no place to hide 7 and 15,000. And... Uh, David Johnson, who had been up to 170,000, has 
Come down uh, at about 140 through attrition. Blinds are about to hit him. He, he needs to get some chips in a stealing mode in there. Or pick up an ace. Well. Raise. Raise. 45. 45,000 total. Hmm. From what we've seen of Twig, he's given a lot of respect to David Johnson. And so he has to there, Jesse, because, you know, what has he played? Six, six seven hands that he's won? He, and we've played, what, nearly 90 hands? So Five. King 10 cannot be good in this spot. Well, Robin's going to move in here, guaranteed, with Ace 10. He's just too short. He's too short. He, um, he's taking that he doesn't really care what, what David's got. I'm sure that this is going to play in his mind. that He's not going to find a bigger hand than Ace 10. Hold on. Yeah, that's the story, and uh, David Johnson is going to have to come Pass. from behind again. The saving grace for him is that uh, he's got I the stopping guy wasn't going to work, so... I'll tell you, that the good really good, good news for me. David Johnson is that he's facing the self-proclaimed unluckiest man in poker. <laughs> Keston will make this... Uh, this spot about evens for a split pot. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Robin Kesson's calling out for the eight. <laughs> but uh, the spot no, is Kesson all in and dominating. And uh, that that a good board right now because likely the ten will play. <clears throat> Absolutely. Johnson funkin' for the eight, as is Bridge North. <laughs> oh dear. This is just Can it happen face. again, Jesse? Can it come another pair on the river? Here we go around the bush. No. And I look twice, but the ace ten plays with the trays. And a double up for Keston. That's going to knock Johnson on the back foot. I'm seeing seven, but... Just his timing's just not been there, is it? Every time he's uh, David's yeah. found a playable hand, four-handed, um, he's been played back out and been dominated. It's true. It's true. Okay. He's run into some big stuff, has David Johnson. Oh. Well, I've been saying okay, which means okay, I'm back in it, and quite rightly so. Uh, 130,000, very playable in this spot. One thing I. We would have to give Johnson credit for. He's got a great temperament for poker. He uh, doesn't seem to be affected much by the swings and pitfalls. Although, as you said, he has been betraying Pass. a little bit of nerves with the shaky Pass. hands. David Johnson's actually an uh, um, uh, exotic animal in Porto. <laughs> oh, really? Raise. Turtle right. doves. And, well, Johnson's got a decision here. Or is it a decision? Not really. Pass. Queen high for him is, uh, it might as well be 2-3. He was actually saying to one of the uh, guys in the green room before the game started, he's got a thousand snakes turning up at the uh, hotel tomorrow. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> and I'm sure and I'm sure someone puts a bad beat on him, he'll uh, <laughs> send them to their room. Right. <laughs> a thousand snakes? What do you do with a thousand snakes these days? Snakes and ladders? Is that a python in your bed, or you're pleased to see me? I don't know. <laughs> Good. Pass. I think I know Samuel Jackson would know what to do with him. Stick him on a plane. What a terrible film that was. Pass. <laughs> he has to push Raise. it, doesn't he, with the fives? Raise. Yeah. You take that back. And the way things have been going for Johnson... Uh, They're running the sixes. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that is the way things have been going for him. But Twig with a... Well, a no decision, really. No. He want to know how much it is. He might feel like he can afford this. It's 51,000 more. He can't afford this with 6-7. Even if he turned his hands over, I don't think he wants to take a 50-50 and uh, double Johnson up with 6-7, that's for sure. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, rationale. I, I, I'm I'm speechless, Jesse. It, it, I must was, say, it, it was getting about seven to f seven to four, maybe or something. Man, I, bros, boys. I don't know. He, he might have felt like he was getting close to the price for two overcards, 
As it is, uh, Twig but, in tremendous shape. But if you read him for twos, threes, fours, or fives, oh, what a read! <laughs> yeah, Johnson can feel a bit aggrieved here. Although, uh, if the fives hold up, he'll be back. There's a five! Wow. Maybe not now. You sure? Yeah. And, uh... Jeez, I... It's a mistake. That's a mis I'm sorry. That call him with a six, seven, even though he's got fives. What? It, it, it's a it, very loose call from Kevin. It, it does seem like Twig would have been in fine shape. Uh, the good thing is, at least a hit. Had he just folded, but well, considering of David Johnson's um, table image here, Jesse, in this one, it's it's a strange call. Yeah, I mean, uh, perhaps the indication here is that uh, Twig feels like he's going to have to gamble a little bit somehow to win this heat. And and maybe he does have to gamble. I, I don't know. You know, there's four left. Only one of them is going to win. But there's a fine line between okay. gambling and stupidity, Jesse. But the leaderboard now showing uh, Johnson, Keston, and Twig in a real match race here. And Aiken had a clear leader. And, uh Twig now down to just one bullet. In fact, Pass. between the three of these guys, one bullet each. Right. Right. Apparently, what Johnson was waiting 000. for to make the button raise. Thirty-eight thousand total. Yeah. We raise yeah. all in. Cool. The cool. last two hands have gone disastrous for awesome. Twig. He's on the verge of doubling up David Johnson and now doubling himself out. And. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, this fourth place finish that Twig seems destined to right now, it, it's uh, not indicative yeah. of the way he's played tonight, which is with a whole lot of heart. You have to say the 6-7 is un undoing, Jesse. Um, it was a double out and a double down, and it could be a uh, fourth place finisher here. Yeah, he still 2-8 in the deck. It's going to be huge news for David Johnson and Bridge North. There's over 200 grand in the pot. And... Uh, Jeez, I think David Johnson will be close to chip leader if these ladies hold. What a result. For him. For the gutshot qualifier twig. Sort of on the watery end here of a grave. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. That's one, that's right, yeah. And that's Dunham. Nice to meet you. Right. Take care, yeah. I'd say one person who's very happy to see him go, that's James Aikenhead. Yeah. It was the only person willing to play back at, uh, at James tonight, and now Kevin's gone, I think we're going to see James absolutely run these two guys over. Well, you get the feeling that Kevin Twig is someone whose name you're going to hear in the future. He made a strong showing, but in the end, could not outrun the over pair, and David Johnson, uh, with a strong showing of life now, three ways. In fact, Barry, uh, every indication that if uh, a bunch of raggedy cards get dealt out this next few hands, in fact, no one picks up anything, you'd have to figure Aikenhead to be able to push up to 400,000 without resistance. Absolutely. I mean, that's what you figure. What'll happen, of course, uh, remains to be seen. These guys are going to have to play back against him if they're going to try and uh, get some chips out of James. That's the problem. Raised to 40,000 total. 40,000 is his modus operandi. You know, David's going to have to muster a... Oh, he gets the queens again. 40,000. 100,000 total. We raised to 100,000. No, it's not an all-in raise. It's 40 Last. plus 60. And uh, is this enticing to Aikenhead? Do we need down of a... Look strong, so Jesse. The take just over a minimum re-raise. So you need to put in... Take that back. Put another 20 in it was a verbal uh, de course, declaration, so the bet is going to stand 60,000 more, total of 100. What your hand? Hmm? What your hand? Deuces. <laughs> I mean, what kind of thoughts should we going through Aiken Heads? Oh, oh well, a quick decision, the right decision. Fold is what's going through his mind, Jesse, for, for one. Wow. Queens? No. <laughs> yeah, it's Queens. <laughs> yeah. King's right. <laughs> you know, uh, Johnson not far from the chip lead here. I mean, uh, 
It's not the flashiest of games. I mean, yeah, solid right. as they come. Solid as a rock mm -hmm. is David Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he can pick up queens one out of every three or four hands, you, you, <laughs> you, know what? you fancy he's unstoppable. But that's the problem, Jesse. David Johnson's going to need cards. 40, well, he's, Race, he's got a 40, total. Nice. Now, does Robin fancy this A7 being any good against David Johnson? How different is this than the Ace-10? Well, not a great deal. It's a simple situation. Does he think he's any good? He knows he's going to get called. Um, it's only 54,000 more if uh, Robin pushes in. Robin's got 94. He's got 7 in. Surely he's not thinking of calling. No, he's seeing how much the raise will be. And that's what he's working out. He knows it's an insta-call, really, for uh, for David Johnson. Just trying to figure out how strong he is. Pass. Can't well, say I blame him. No, I think it's the, wi what the wise move, considering David Johnson's table image. Ooh, now that is a decision. Does he have three options here, call, raise, or fold? Well, he's first to speak on the flop. And... For an aggressive player, that's not a bad shout. Problem is, he's badly dominated. I wonder how committed Johnson will be. Call. It is a call. call. And uh, like you say, he's dominated. I mean, the queen is going to be a disaster for Aikenhead. Uh, if they both miss, who knows? Y you could be thinking stop and go here. Yes. I'm sure he was trying to avoid the ace. He's not going to do his chips now, Will Aikenhead. No. Check. No, no, I think if David if David checks Check. behind him... Jo oh, David Johnson, bet it! Yeah. I think James is going to bet out here. With two Check. hearts on board, you can't put him on, on, on the ace because it's a, a dangerous board. Interesting. I mean, surely Aikenhead's going to bet something now. The first check maybe could have been a trap check, but the second check. check. No, he's checked it again. Check. check. There's 87,000 in here. Oh, and Aikenhead is feeling gutted right now. Could have won it, he says. Gifted, really, to well, Johnson. I think it was a mistake, Jesse, you know, with the, with the two hearts on ball coming ace high. Once he's checked it um, in position, David Johnson, you, you, have to, you can't put him on the ace. And he's played so passively in this particular... Uh, he, that um, I think it was there to be stolen by James. So David Johnson, the proud beneficiary here, and he is the new chip leader. I mean, that's going to put a lot of wind in his sails. Absolutely. Can you see the uh, the vein in his neck, Jesse? It was yeah. it was beating very very hard. It's a big spot he's in. He's he's. I think he's, he's got he's got a shot. You you have to say he's definitely got a shot. You know he's in here on about a twenty pound qualifier from uh, Bridge North Poker Society. It's a great spot. As you said, a half million in the prize pool. Cool. See, the dynamics have changed now with uh, no race. with David Johnson being chipped up. James is not going to be pulling too many moves on him just yet. Th th that's the reason for the limp, is it? Absolutely. And Aikenhead's going to walk into it here. 25,000. Race. Race. Sort of the poker equivalent of getting your hand slapped. Just a darn sight better than the poker equivalent of the stake through the heart. I see. <laughs> Eighty thousand more. He's definitely got the skin of the vampire, has he? Doesn't seem too much sunlight as uh, Mr. Aikenhead. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy White was in here yesterday and he was telling a story. It's a, it's a crazy story, but true, that uh, many, many years ago... Uh, <laughs> not actually, I don't think I can tell the story. <laughs> that good, eh? <laughs> uh, Dave 
David Johnson. Over 300,000 for the first time tonight. Yep. And you must say, over the last 15, 20 minutes, he's a pretty strong Raised card rush. 40,000 total. Pass. Pass. And uh, Kasten, not for the first time tonight, a bit dejected yeah. on his uh, dealings from the deck. I've always got a hand. It's not a hand. Uh, Robin knows full well exactly what his situation is. Uh, is it this hand or the next one? What's he got? What, 70, 70 odd thousand he's got left in his stack. It's... I mean, uh, from the double through point of view, 72 double through would get him up to 150, which is... 10 big blinds. If he gets down to about 50, it's sort of an extra double through, isn't yeah. it, that you need? Pass. I think he's all in no matter what he's got here. Raised all in. <coughs> he, has, he has a pointy one, Jesse. That's Pass. good enough on the small blind. Mm. Yeah, 103 hands, and that's all he has to show for it. But there's three empty seats who would take that in a heartbeat. Wonder is is Aikenhead getting down on himself? He's just uh, looking a bit antsy pantsy right now. Yeah, he's just leaning on his uh just maybe trying to Pass. refocus. <coughs> I'm sure this is gonna be a raise in the 40. small. Raise to forty thousand total yeah. pass. Shows the ace, says, uh, hey, I'm not stealing. Well, we, we've cycled through this seven and 15,000 level very quickly. This now, oh, one or two hands left in it. Um, as far as this world open goes, this is so far the longest heat we've seen. Uh, these guys playing very hard poker. Nobody wants to get knocked out here. Sometimes you say that uh, when you see a lot of hands like this, it's a sign of a that nobody was willing to reach out and grab it. But I think we've had a very well-fought match tonight. Poker's been very high class here tonight, Jesse. And um, raised to forty thousand total. We've seen lots of big hands, but not two big hands at the same time. Well, not too many. Oh, hold the phones. I, I, <sighs> David Johnson's got a huge hitter. I don't know if Aikenhead can lay him down. And and Johnson raised. wants to make a bet. Raised. He wants to make a bet. That's going to entice Aikenhead to come over the top. 100,000 total. Oh, this could be curtain. This could be everything. This is a tournament right here. If uh, if J if James wants to get a little Pass. over aggressive with his sevens, this could be it. Done and dusted. How can he not? I mean, he, can, he can't just throw him away, can he? 60,000 more. The problem is if he just flat call, he can't flat call this because there are going to be so more. many. Like he could make it a full hundred more. I mean, that's serious. Or is he being given the rope to hang himself with? Well, I want to raise. Oh dear. I'm on him. And in. David Johnson has woken oh. up with the big bullets here. The <laughs> Rockets are going to do the damage. Oh, says Aikenhead. Unlucky. Unlucky. Destiny, baby. Get lucky. Wow, where has this guy come from? David Johnson really down really to the felt, pretty <laughs> much. We were berating his play, playing very passively, and he's about to have pretty much all the chips in play. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Aiken had could not see it coming uh, h hard to. There's uh, two sevens in the deck, and uh, that's what James is resting on. Oh, hello. Up and down, okay. lots and lots of That's outs here for James. A three, an eight, or a seven. Tournament right here, Jesse, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it looks like it. Ten cards for Aiken had all the rest for David Johnson in Bridge North. I say. Good play. Good game, man. Good play He's had a strong showing tonight, James Aiken. He's a player. He's a, a really good player and uh, got very unlucky this evening, James. You can't beat the bullets, not with two sevens.
couple draws for Aikenhead, but uh, the money goes to the pocket rockets. And David Johnson, massive chip leader as we go heads up. I made a bad call, you know. I made, uh, made some good laydowns, and this one I didn't lay down. Half and half, I suppose, off the side in my brain with her. Because he re raised me previously with a low pair, he says, so uh, I could be racing, he could have ace king, so I flipped a coin and pushed, but long time. Head up on one side, 19 years old and only playing poker for 18 months. On the other side, 20 years of experience in every big tournament in Las Vegas. Who's got all the chips? David Johnson. <laughs> I don't know about you, Jesse. My money's on David. <laughs> <coughs> well, I, I mean, Keston's got a mountain to climb. More than five to one against here. Yep. It's a big ask. With all of experience and the blinds like this, it's, it's a very, very big ask. And uh, David Johnson has ridden the backs of big cards here. He's played the big cards well, but he's definitely ridden them. And uh, from his point of view, should he just almost set Robin in blind once or twice? No, I'm going to... The way he's been hitting cards, it's... Uh, I don't think he's right, been... 10, in, his way, he's, been, he's not been playing raggy hey. cards. He's been playing very solid. Thank you. Blind's up to 10 and 20,000 now. Uh. You know, it's... <laughs> I mean, uh, 10 and 20, that sort of represents everything poker's about. You can do whatever you want, but... If a guy gets good cards and plays them solidly and gets them in the right spots, uh, it's a tough combination to beat. Absolutely. And uh, Aikenhead and Twig did their best to run circles <laughs> around uh, David Johnson, but he, he, he had the goods when he, when he set one. his money in. Nice and uh, if you can't beat a man oh, when he's all in, you cannot knock him out. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> this is a bit of foreign territory for Keston. He's... He's quite comfortable heads up, but he's he's far more comfortable starting with five hundred thousand and then <laughs> and then doing his money. <laughs> maybe it's his time, <laughs> Jesse. May, maybe this is his time. And you you have to say with, with two double ups and he's got the chip league. But so uh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, Keston's done pretty well to get here. I mean, a lot of it's just been sort of <clears throat> avoiding the hatchet. Okay. That's plenty for him. And <sighs> problem is that. David's not just going to take a fly with any two just to try and knock him out. That's oh, that, that a clear sign. But Johnson's focused here. He's, he's getting over that line, isn't he? Yes. And, uh, you know, he's, he's shown a lot of positive qualities tonight, David Johnson. I mean, th th this guy, as he gets older, I think is going to be a huge player for the future. But his temperament, uh, he doesn't seem to let the adrenaline get the best of him. No, and he, getting down to low as 33,000, which we saw on the stats a little earlier, um, not once did he start getting really out of shape. He waited and waited and waited. That should be enough heads up. Cool. Any raise. Give Robin the option for the free flop. No raise. And Keston will grab it with both hands. What are you up to, David, he says. Hmm. Bad time for the stop Check. and go. 20. Don't like this 20, play, then. Jesse. Heads up. You've got to think your queen's good. Try and let Robin Kest Keston catch up, but um, no. Yeah, I mean, it seems like maximum pressure should be... Uh, uh, Johnson should force Robin to see five cards. I mean, that's that's what Robin doesn't want to have to do with any two, does it? Well, absolutely. Uh, you've got top pair. You've got a decent kicker. Um, you've got to try and let Robin hang himself, and... Uh, Rom is not going to be pushing just with nothing. Lines 10 and 20,000 now. Uh, Keston's going to be on the hot seat for quite a while here. I'm sure that's good enough to stick it in again. Has to be. Yep. Rise on. Cool. Cool. And uh, okay. Keston doesn't like to hear that quickly. It's a pair of nines. It's one over card for Robin. This could be the seal of the deal here for David Johnson. DJ on the verge of the semifinals. And uh, Keston needs to pull one out of his hat. David Johnson did catch a king against Kevin Twig's 10, so let's see if there's a bit of justice on dear. He's killed one of his so outs already. It has, although the sixes now are in play. Uh, a, a, a club would end it, wouldn't it? It would. 
Justin's been in worse spots before, but he is whistling That's Dixie, over. and now all over. Flush for sure. Good job. Robin. Okay. Out in second, a good match, but David Johnson, the man of the moment, 19 years old and in the semifinals. Nice run the cards. The nines, yeah, the nines turn into the flush and uh, five clubs. David Johnson, who's to say what comes next for him? The semifinal, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the youngest player in this tournament and he's through to the semifinals. David Johnson, well played. Jesse. Now, on the, from the outside, it looked like you were so calm with your temperament, but were you feeling the nerves? I was feeling it right from the start, really, I suppose. Um, obviously, yeah, I got up a little bit at the start, and then I went down, and I was up and then down, and it was mad it was topsy-turvy. Yeah, I mean, you got very low. What were you telling yourself? Don't panic, or? I was thinking, just keep calm, just wait for your cards, and uh, hopefully hit them. Well, obviously, I did, so. And James Aikenhead on, on your right, he was giving lots of trouble, wasn't he? Well, he was. He seemed to be raising a lot. And uh, to be fair, he got unlucky at the end when he, he went on all in with the sevens and I had the aces. So. But he was picking up some nice hands as well. First time on TV, first big tournament, you're through to the semis. Uh, what's, what's your plans from here? What, what's your goal? Well, um, obviously, it'd be nice to get through to the final um, next week. So hopefully I can progress, progress on today and uh, get through to the final. Well, best of luck, David. David Johnson through to the semifinals. Who will join him there, along with Jimmy White and Raj Moda? Well, next time, David Rudling and the Welsh up-and-coming superstar Roberto Romanello sit down here at the PartyPoker.net World Open 3.